Hey guys, uh, this is going to be just a quick sample video of showing my program working with Jinx. Uh, this is a pretty commonly used LED matrix program. It's got all kinds of crazy features available. Now I've already got it configured to my uh, dimension of my twinkly square. And I'll show you how you set that up. So you go into setup, matrix, matrix options, width, height, pixel count. That's automatically computed. So what do we got here? I didn't mess with any of these other settings. And I just set that up as it was. But I did have to set. And maybe there's another way of doing this. But I had to manually create my four universes this way as the same device and then it outputs in order to that i could not figure out a way to tell the program to send send it to the same ip address <clears throat> now how's my output device setup it's pretty simple uh tell it to device type sartnet IP address, and then you uncheck broadcast, and you don't have to send our kit net sequence numbers, and then the channel range uh, has to match what it is in our net to Twinkly. Um, my matrix is eight squares, as you know, eight by eight squares in a in a square, and that gives you this many pixels 512 so if I went with a 512 frame like I could configure it to I would only need three universes but that would um, that was that's not the default setting in X-Lite so you don't have to change that it's just I'm going to end up using an extra universe just for basically four pixels which is a little weird but whatever so anyway uh here's my four universes now the next thing you have to do and this is the part that like to killed me setting this up uh you're not outputting at all yet and you can't actually output anything until you set up an output patch now what this does in the program is it tells it which one of these squares goes to where in what universe so in theory, I could completely map this manually, one square at a time, to the obnoxious mapping that a twinkly square gets. But you don't actually have to do that because I have added a feature that sorts the twinkly square mapping. So it will come through as a normal grid. Now you have to reboot the program after doing that, but it only has to be done once. And after that, it's good. So let's assume they're in order, and I'll show you how to use their fast patch. Otherwise, it takes absolutely forever to do this. Okay, so starting in this corner, let's say fast patch. Um, and this is not intuitive at all. So 32 by 6, let's say. I can't do the whole thing at once. And then say starting at universe zero. First channel is zero. And you have some options here too if you want to if want to zigzag and stuff, but that doesn't apply to what we're doing. So let's go ahead and hit OK on that. And it's going to properly channel map me. See it changing over here as I go. All the way to there. Now, I'll need to set Universe 1 up now. And this is where it gets a little pain in the buddy. So now I'm going to set Universe 1. And the dimensions are the same. But I can only do one because if I do more than one, it's just going to put the square straight down. So X, as long as X is long enough, and go to 1. And then you hit OK. 
So now I have filled this all the way up. And the last channel used is 65 on Universe 1. You need to know this information. So you're going to come over here, hit Fast Patch again. It will start on 66. But you're going to have to reset this again to 32 and say 10 or whatever. And still on 1 and hit OK. Now we've run out of room again. This one is the last that it assigned. Now let's go to this one. And we're going to fast patch this one. And it's going to be universe 2. Make sure Y is only set to 1 again or you're going to mess yourself up in, uh, trying to do this. Hit OK. Last universe, or sorry, last channel used so far. It's 35. Let's go over here. Fast patch. It's auto put in 36 for me. We're going to do dimension X is 32. Y is 10. And hit OK. Now here's where it's annoying. And so now we have these two squares that were not sent because we're running 510 channels. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do these two manually. Zero, one, two. Three, four, five. Now, if we are done, hit close. And let's go ahead and we're live previewing. That's good. Now we just need to go up here and hit start output. And there you have it. So let's go in and show you a couple things that you can do with this. Uh, let's see, how about Metaballs? Uh, granted, my display is not as bright as that. I'm going to work on that one these days. We got a VU meter. Audio. That's right, these are reactive. Audio objects. This one's kind of cool. That's the current time of the day. You can just let that run all day long. Giving you an actual reason to uh, have your square. I don't know. What is this? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, uh, I know uh, our other Twinkly hacker, uh, Fook uh, Han, He'll recognize this from the old uh, unpacking on Commodore 64, which is what that's supposed to look like. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, where's the other clock at? It's off the screen. Simple VU meter. Simple audio waveform. Color scrolls. So now, uh, there we go. There's the clock. Um, and weirdly you can like mix and match this stuff if it's on top of each other. I'm not super familiar with how to use all the stuff in this program, but as you can see, it can fade back and forth, um, black out, plenty of fun stuff. And now you have the option of using this with, well, with your twinkly devices. I designed it to use with the square specifically, but you can use it with any grid. That's what the program is designed for. It's for matrices. So there you go. I hope this um, gives you guys some more use out of your um, Twinkly devices.